Hello everybody, this is Michael with Mikey Does Outdoors. Uh, coming to you with my uh, next video. This is for Heron Lake State Park in New Mexico. Kind of in north central New Mexico. It's in between Chama and Tia Amarillo. And it's a pretty neat place. Had a good time. Lots of good stuff to see. Uh, be good if you have a certain sailboats or kind of boats to go there. It's really a good place. Uh, but uh, watch the video and Hope you like it. Hello everybody, this is Michael of Mikey Does Outdoors. This is my very huge campsite at Heron Lake State Park in New Mexico. Kind of in north central New Mexico. Close to Chama and Tia Amaria. Uh, really nice place. I mean, the campsites are not right down close to water, but you may or may not want that. But they do have water and electricity. Uh, they don't have sewer, but there's a dump station not too far away if you need to. Good place for tents. But I thought I'd show you this. Uh, this is one of the, this is a smaller of the three bolt ramps that I found. Uh, this is one that seemed to people with kayaks and easy, easily unloaded boats seem to come to. Uh, this bird was out there. I'm not sure what kind of bird that is, but he was out there. Flying around, there was several of them out there. Brazil was a seagull, but it doesn't look the right color. And this is from that boat ramp. Here's a parking lot for another boat ramp at the marina. And they have a marina here. It's a private marina, mainly for the sailboaters. And they have a sailboaters club. I think it's the New Mexico sailboaters club. But, uh, They'll rent you a spot if you want to on there. But uh, that's a big boat ramp over there. And there's a, one, another one over uh, to the left of where we are filming this. A big one, big nice one. They have plenty of places to unload your boat if you want to. And this is actually the best way to access this lake for fishing or something is to, to is to, with a boat because it has some bank, but right over only right over here. It has the other bank, but your campsites, you're gonna, or even the access points, you're gonna have to hike a pretty good ways to get to the with all your stuff. And so, they have trails. Most of those trails are leading down to the lake. Seems like. And it was a little warmer here than it was in some places that I've been, but uh, still not too bad. Yeah, more. I love the mountains, and you can see back there in the, behind the lake. I thought I'd take a walk over to the dam and take a look. This is the only place, one lady told me this is the only place she could go and look and see the uh, fish swimming. And so I thought I'd just come down and take a little look. And uh, I could see them all the way down there at the, down at the dam swimming, but I couldn't get it to come through on, on video. Um, and so I won't show that here, but, um, uh, I thought it was worth a try. And it's fun to see the, see it from the dam. And it's interesting to me sometimes how, uh, engineers can take, uh, the, make a dam work with all the existing, uh, geology and topography and stuff and, and make it work. This has been here for a long time, so it must work pretty good. Um. It is a neat little deal. See, and there's, and if you go on that little rock shelf there to the right, it's about the same. It's pretty good distance off the water surface. There were people across the way, jumping off of that one and having a good time. That's what a lot of people do over there by the, on that side where the boat ramp is, uh, is jump off, have a good time, launch boats and do some kayaking and stuff. Lots of fun because it's it's a little warmer than it was up in the mount the Colorado mountains where. I've, where I'd been in the in the Utah and Montana and stuff, but it wasn't too bad. It was in the eighties. But it's just right for getting in the water and have a good good time. I think I wasn't expecting the first time I heard a splash over there and somebody had jumped right off of that. I don't think they were dove. I think they jumped and did a cannonball off of it, which was kinda cool. Good for them. <laughs> you know. Good, cheap entertainment for kids. Keeps them out of trouble. 
and for adults, keep us out of trouble. You know, whether you want to swim or fish or kayak or whatever, get a canoe out there. If you're good enough and you do sailboating, that's even more fun, probably. And it's just, it has some good views. That's for sure. As you can see the people launching their boats over there at that dam at that boat ramp where it was. One group of them, but probably that one right there, was an older, two older couples that had an inflatable kayak with some pontoons they had fashioned onto it. And one guy explained to me that's how old folks had to do it so they wouldn't turn over. And there's a video selfie from everybody. Yep, I'm here. This is me, live and in, in person. And so, I might do that almost everywhere I go, just, just for fun. Because part of it is about me being there in the outdoors and doing stuff. And I tried my hand at fishing early the next morning with before the people showed up at the boat ramp. And I actually got a couple nibbles. I had one. I'd had one hooked up pretty good on my, but I had a little, my little dock demon pole that only has like four pound line on it. And uh, I don't know if, yeah, the fish got off and it's probably good because I'm not sure I could have landed him with it. But I would have loved to have given it a, more of a try, but it didn't last long. And it wasn't too long after that that people started showing up to launch their kayaks and stuff. And so I, I decided to, to bug out of there. Which I'm about to head back to Eagle Nest Lake with my own, my little boat, and I'm gonna do a lot of fishing. Cause I love to fish. I haven't done as much of that, and I sure haven't done as much catching on these videos. But when I the next one you see of that one, it should be of me catching, doing some a lot of fishing and doing some catching. Unless they just don't want to bite for some reason, <laughs> which is not likely. If you have a boat, we can go chase them down. Although I don't have a fish finder or anything, but I probably don't need it. I don't think. <coughs> Even to get down there, though, I had to trek a little ways, but it's fine, you know. I need to get back in shape anyway, so. And I'm showing you what I did. This is what we did at Eagle. It's like when I went with the uh, the guide. We had these little, uh, I think his were the, I don't know, mine, mine are the Daredevil. I have some Daredevils and I have some Panther Martin. Uh, and I don't know which ones are which, but you just put a little dab of a power bait on there. And then wet that before you cast it so it'll stay on there. And then you just cast it out. We were trolling it behind the boat, but... If you're just on the bank, you can cast it, or on a dock or a pier or something, you can cast it out and reel it in. And I've just, I've, you know, I've grown up mostly using those enclosed spin cast kind of reels, but I've been enjoying these spinning reels now that I've learned how to use them properly. But, uh, and this one's a good one. This is a Fluger Trion that I'm using. It's a medium or light action, I'm thinking. And so, It's a good one, though. And I just cast it out and reel it in. And you can vary your speeds because sometimes the fish want a faster one and sometimes they want a slower reel one. So it needs to be going just fast enough, though, that you can, the spinner will spin. Or, you know, it's the, uh, why have a spinner if it's not spinning? There are some weeds out there. That's another thing. If you get out in a boat, you can get out past some of that weed. And you still might get a little bit of it, but it won't be quite the same as if you're on the bank. And just standing there, you see all those wonderful mountains over there.
one of my other trips, I've been on the other side of those mountains. Or in the middle of some of them, maybe. And this one, this one is the bubble and fly. And I was going to try to show you how to fill the fly, the bubble up, but I'm going to have to do a little better job of that. That's, you can kind of see it, but not good enough. I'll have to set up a camera where you can actually just see. Instead of having, I have a camera on my on a rig on my chest, and that's what I was hoping was catching it, but I'll have to set up a, a better deal. And I will. I'll show you exactly what I do. Guys in the right places, and with the right fly on the end of there, you know, almost anywhere. If they're biting top water, they'll go for this kind of rig. And it's fun, you know, almost any day when you're out there trying to fish. It sure beats a day of working. Anytime, you know. And it's a lot better if you can catch them. But just being there, enjoying, enjoying the outdoors, because there's a cool breeze, you know. There's, you can hear the nature, sounds of nature. Just a fun place to be. I didn't catch any fish, but I didn't spend that much time fishing. And so... It doesn't really matter. I had a good time. And this is towards the end of my my big trip, but I have one more place after this, and then I came home on that big trip. But um, and it's I had lots of different varieties on the trip, but it was it was a whole lot of fun. That's for sure. Can't beat a a good old trip with the RV and getting the camp and get all kinds of scenery that I've never seen before and uh, do various kinds of things. But, uh, you get to meet lots of fun people. Everywhere you go, there's good people, nice people, fun to visit with. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please like and uh subscribe to my youtube channel uh, and i'm i got lots of good stuff coming uh and i plan intend to keep it coming uh so uh your support of just subscribing and hitting the like button would be great and share it with pe other people if you know somebody i'd like to see it thank you